Greetings everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be uh, addressing you virtually. I wish it was uh, face to face, but I guess this is the new new. Today I want to tell you a little bit about the Ajmal group. We are known as Ajmal Perfumes. We're headquartered in Dubai. We started our journey. In fact, it was my grandfather who founded the company. We come from a small village. Today it's a district called Hojai in Assam. It's about 160 kilometers from the capital, Guwahati. And initially, my grandfather came from a farming background, but being an entrepreneur by spirit, he realized very early on that agriculture is not something that he could rely on to uh, look after his fairly large family. So he tried a few things with uh, pulses and rice, etc., but something just didn't click. He was then introduced to something called oud. Oud is a commodity, and today oud is in huge trend all over the world in the perfumery industry. And oud, the best quality of oud in the world comes from India. And the only place oud grows in India is in Assam. Initially, my grandfather started from getting the oud from the jungles, passing it on to traders in the, in, in the village, who would then travel to Bombay, now Mumbai, to trade with the Arabs. Arabs have been trading with, uh, and I'm sure you all know that Arabs have been trading with India for centuries, primarily for textiles, spices, and perfumes. Initially, it was the, the middlemen who would come to Bombay, and then they would then pass it on to traders at the time, which was primarily from Kuwait and Saudi in those days. In the early 50, uh, granddad came to Bombay to come closer to the customer. 51 was when the company was registered in Bombay. And that's where our story really begins. We are celebrating our 70th year of existence today. I'm the first of the third generation who's in the business, and I'm very, very proud to be so. So once Grandad started dealing with the Arabs who were coming to India for the, their wares, um, he realized that he needed to be closer to the customer. And that's why in the 50s, he took his first journey to the GCC. Uh, within the GCC, he happened to come to UAE, where he met the rulers. He was very enamored and very impressed with the vision of the rulers of UAE, particularly Abu Dhabi and Dubai. And it was in the 70s when he asked his uh, second son, my uncle Fakhruddin, to move to uh, Dubai and set up our first shop in Dubai. So in 1976, my uncle set up the first store in Dubai. And then our journey of retail started from there on. Today, we have over 270 stores around the world, 54 of them in UAE. Beyond that, we export to about 45 countries. We are also present in, um, in many, many duty frees, travel retail around the world. We were also on board many international airlines, but as I'm sure you all know, that now that is obviously restricted. Let's hope and pray that that changes in the near future. Our growth has been phenomenal. It's an amazing story where a founder from India, from a very small village started, came to Dubai, spread the brand around the world. And it was only a few years ago that we decided that India was now ready to take on the category of fine fragrances. And that's when I was deputed to look at. It's not that we didn't have a presence in India. We've always had a presence in India. But we wanted to clearly focus on the Indian consumer. So it was about five years ago when I started uh, spending more time in, uh, in India. My expertise lies in, I'm what they call a perfumist. I'm a little bit, of, I'm a jack of all trades. I, I specialize in perfumery, but I have had experience in sales, supply chain, product development, etc. And when I traveled India, I realized that India is, 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 a, it's a paradox. North is very different from the South in terms of taste. East 
is very different from the West. It's not the same like anywhere else where you could truly sort of like pigeonhole the tastes of certain people and say, all right, they all fit within this kind of a structure of a fragrance profile. It doesn't work that way in India. India has to be worked on very, very carefully. And we have to develop products for different parts of India because of the taste, as I mentioned earlier. So it took me about two, two and a half years to try and understand, and I would never dare to say that I still understand it. We are still in the process of learning and we are evolving as we move forward. We have about uh, close to 60 um, uh, stores of our own between stores and kiosks around India. And the plan is to grow to about 300 over the next few years between company owned stores and we are going to go into a franchise uh, model as well in the near future. We have developed uh, fragrances for the Indian market. And I'm very, very proud to say that today we are not only developing, but we are also creating and we are filling and mixing the fragrances in India. We've got third party fillers who do it who are almost on par with some of the best filling uh, organizations around the world. Of course, the development studio, the R&D studio is all back in Dubai. We have a 200,000 uh, square foot state of the art facility where we can produce up to 100,000 bottles a day. But a lot of the fragrances that are targeted for the Indian market are also developed in India, primarily to keep in mind the taste of the Indian market. Apart from that, what's interesting is the, the way that we want to grow in India, which is very, very different from the rest of the world. In the rest of the world, our distribution tends to be primarily either through retail or through uh, partnerships with distributors that then take our perfumes into specialized perfumeries or department stores, etc. In India, which is highly led by FMCG, and we all know that uh, organized retail is still uh, not as wide as, as disorganized retail. I believe it's somewhere 10% is about uh, organized retail, but that's growing fairly quickly. So apart from our retail, the other channels of distribution within India that we employ are obviously through uh, distributors, through um, our MBOs, so partners like Shopperstop, partners like uh, 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 Pantaloon, and, and many more around the, uh, around the country. I'm very proud to say that in two and a half countries, we're already available in about 300, 3,000, 3, I'm sorry, 3,000 doors. And the vision is to reach uh, about 15,000 doors in the next three to five years. There are a lot of plans in the books, but one of the things that I do want to mention that is very, very unique about India and what we've done in India is the, is the collaboration that we've done with a very, very famous group. And I'm sure we all know that, you know, fragrances are an entry point to a fashion brand. But it's the first time that I'm aware of, at least in India, that we did a co-brand arrangement with the house of Anita Dongre. And I'm really, really happy to see that this year we launched fragrances, uh, co-branded fragrances, both in the name of AND and Global DC, which I'm sure you know are uh, house of Anita Dongre brands, with the Crafted by Ajmal branding. And we have started selling them through their um, EBOs, our retail stores, and through MBOs. Of course, a very, very, very important channel of distribution within India is the online, of course. And that is growing at an absolute phenomenal scale. COVID obviously has put a spanner to our plans. But having said that, we are still pushing ahead and we see that we should be able to achieve our plans in the next three to five years. My vision for India is to become the number one fine fragrance brand in the country and for the world is to be available globally 
perhaps not in every every uh, small town in the world because as Ajmal we don't want to be a commercial brand. We want to be a selective brand available in prestigious uh, points of sale but we certainly want to be. The vision is to become a global brand and we believe that in the next three to five years we should be able to achieve that. Coming back to India, it is a huge market what I can say is that the world that has learned about perfumery and evolved in the world of perfumery in the last 100, 120 years, I believe that India will achieve the same kind of uh, adoptive growth with the consumers in the next 10 years. And I'm very, very uh, passionate to be part of that journey. I want the Indian consumer to be uh, availing of the same kind of products and the services that they would look forward to in different parts of the world. And this growth is being pushed by the millennials and the Gen Z particularly. And we are creating products to target these two categories particularly. And I'm very, very happy to see ourselves do a full circle. We started from a small village in India. We've gone to the world and now we're coming back to India. We're putting a lot of focus, a lot of attention, a lot of developmental time and effort in the kind of work that we can achieve to getting to the consumer all across the, 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 the length and breadth of the country. Um, I believe that it's only a matter of time that the consumer, and I'm sure many of you will relate to this, in the olden days, a person had uh, one or two bottles of perfume that they would use for years and years. Our objective is that the way over the years, soap then went into talcum powder, which now has become a usage of Dio. We want perfumery to become uh, a ritualistic part of uh, everyday grooming for the individual. People would use fragrances only during occasions. Our objective is to make that occasion everyday life, morning and evening. And that want, the day that is achieved, I will feel that we have been able to uh, fulfill our dream to bring the kind of lifestyle that a lot of the, uh, the counterparts outside of India enjoy, which our population, they, they, they uh, aspire towards either because they're watching it through uh, the net, they're watching through um, movies, they're being exposed through travel that they go around, and we want them to enjoy the same kind of lifestyle. So, uh, as I said before, um, our, our plans are to reach the kind of scale that uh, India offers. There are multiple avenues, channels of distribution in India, which are very unique to India. And I believe we can take advantage of that and get to consumers, not only in the metropolitan cities, but in tier two, tier three, tier four even cities that are truly supporting the, 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 the growth story of India, either through uh, retail or through distribution or of course through online. Thank you very much for hearing my story, hearing Ajmal's story. I hope you well, well, and uh, take care, be safe, and be well. God bless.